Hey y'all, what's up? This is Jesse Bose from the 19th hole and we're here to talk about the new up and coming tournament. This is the rookie walkthrough. Um, tour 4. Uh, played a lot of Tour 4 last day or so. I uh, did not get a chance to play any from the second tees, neither did anybody else. So this is going to be uh, my takeaway from what I have found to be uh, the best way to play the holes, in my opinion, for Tour 4 and also maybe uh, other techniques as well. So basically, let's go ahead and get started. We've got the Paris Cup Tournament, getting ready and pumped for it. What? I cannot believe it. They changed the name? I mean, what kind of people change the name of the tournament after they don't put everything out already? <sighs> All right. We've got the Metro Open Tournament. Yeah, I, I don't know. All right, we're just going to go with it. The Metro Open Tournament, um, starting on Monday, which is two short days away. Um, this has been a very kind of quick um, turnaround tournament right here. Uh, we weren't able to play the holes until Friday, and it starts on Monday. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. Let's start talking about what we got to do to win that gold medal. Hole number one. And hole number one is a par four. So we got hole one, par four. Um, this is a par four where you have a chance at the eagle, but more than likely most people here are gonna be seeing the birdie. Um, I'm gonna try to give you the tips necessary to give you a chance of getting the eagle. Uh, so here we go. For the rookie, um, going with the Quasar Ball or Titan Ball. If you have Titan Balls to spare, a Titan Ball may not be a bad choice for this hole. Um, as far as your, your clubs go, I'm going to say at least your extra mile. And I like the backbone for this hole. Um, the way I would suggest to play this hole if you can, is you want to take your drive to about right there. And you want to roll it up into this zone right there. Um, make sure, don't go crazy with the top spin. You don't want to roll your ball into this bunker, which is definitely a possibility. So take it easy on the top spin. Don't do anything too dramatic as far as that goes. Um, there is other ways you can play this hole if you don't feel like you have a driver to carry um, the rough right here. Um, you can possibly um, bounce it right there on the fairway and go at it more of a this route, you'll bounce there and over uh, to about the same location. That would be the other alternate way to play this hole to the right side if you don't feel like you have the clubs necessary um, and powerful enough to carry that, um, that rough like I showed you on the first example. Um, definitely that's how I would play the hole. Um, if you have a really strong right to left side wind you could possibly play it to the uh, left side uh, where you're bouncing it somewhere in here and going that way. Um, that's also a possibility as well. Um, as far as the rookies go, I think you're most likely going to stay to the right side. You're most likely going to get a decent type of tailwind, most likely left to right tailwind, to play that shot to the right. If you play in the, the pro or the expert, there's a possibility maybe you'll get a right to left tailwind or something like that or more of a side wind. In that case, you may have to play your shot to the left side, okay? Um, for your second shot, this is what I would suggest doing. Uh, so let's zoom in here a little bit here. So hopefully you are in this zone right here. For your second shot with your backbone, I would suggest to aim it in this zone right here, somewhere in there. Um, you're setting up your shot to the right side of the hole uh, because this, the fairway here does slope this way. So when your ball bounces, the ball's out automatically going to be kind of pushed to the left anyway. Uh, and then also, you do have kind of a, a small ridge here sloping downwards. And the ball will go a little bit more right to left as well there once you get it towards the hole. So that's why we start our ball off to the right, because we allow the slope to take the ball back to the hole. 
and hopefully get you that eagle. Um, if you watch my uh, my weekend my my lunch stream from Friday, we played uh, an hour worth of friendlies on these holes. Um, I took a shot on this hole, and then my opponent took a shot on this hole. Uh, my opponent copied my shot and made the eagle. So definitely would suggest if you have time to go back and check that out. Uh, it's definitely to be the perfect way to play that shot. And uh, played it with no spin. So no spin on that second shot. Alright, so uh, if you do feel like you want to try to do something else, you might have a good long iron. Uh, you can also possibly um, take your shot over all of that mess, land it in this zone right here with a lot of backspin to the hole. Um, that's definitely a possibility as well. I like the skip shot from the middle fairway best, but that's definitely a possibility. You could go with that way as well. So let's move on to hole number two. Uh, hole number two is a par three. So we got hole two, par three. And this is definitely an interesting hole. Uh-oh, wife just got home. We got a package. We'll open that up at the end of the stream. So, hole number two, par three. Uh, for the rookies, I suggest about at least a quasar. Um, and I like the backbone for your iron shot here. Do adjust for an extra 10% uh, wind adjustment here on this shot. Um, the best way that I would suggest playing this hole is you're going to try and jump it in this zone right here. Um, you're going to take that shot. Most likely going to be a shot with tailwind. Um, Micah, can you please settle down? You're going to take a shot right there with tailwind. Uh, most likely, so you're going to be looking at two bars of backspin, full right spin. Um, you want to take the shot over the bunker and land it in this area right here and roll it to the hole. Uh, very careful on this shot to make sure that you do play your adjustments correctly. Um, the back side of the screen does slope down towards that bunker and there is no rough to stop your ball. It'll be like a, um, it'll be like a sled on an ice covered hill. It's just going to go woo straight down into that bunker. Ain't nothing you can do about it. So make sure you are very careful on your adjustment for this shot. You either want to leave it in the hole or short or right next to the hole. Don't go past the hole. Um, if you get some sort of a side wind, um, a left to right side wind, you may, need, may not need to go with max right spin. Maybe back up on that right spin just a little bit. And if you get some sort of a head wind, uh, you may want to back up on that back spin a little bit, maybe to about a bar and a half a back spin, but continue with that full side spin to the right. Um, there is another way you can play this hole. Um, you can play it to the right side, uh, where you're going to be bouncing it in this zone right here somewhere, taking it to the hole. Um, this may be a safer way to play the hole, but definitely a lot less of a percentage chance to get the ace. So uh, to the right side, you could play it um, and have a really good chance at a short birdie putt. Uh, if you play it to the, the middle, that is definitely going to be your ace shot right there. So anyways, now we're going to move on to our next hole, hole number three, and talk about this one a little bit. So we got hole three, and it's a par five. This is going to be our first par five of the day. Um, this hole right here, um, there are a couple of ways you can play this hole. Um, you can play it to uh, the right side off the tee box. Uh-oh. You can play it to the right side off the tee box. There we go. You can play it to the right side off the tee box for the third time. Bounce it here. Roll it up into here. Um, you can also play it to the left side. Bounce it here. And try to roll it up into here. Um, my suggestion is to use, um, go ahead and use that Titan ball with the uh, extra mile and try to power that shot over everything to up here somewhere so you can roll it up into this zone right here. That would be kind of the best case scenario for this hole, definitely where you want to try to get the ball. Um, if you have um, the ability to do so, 
Uh, if not, you can go for the skip shot or the shot to the right side. Um, from that second location right there, um, you are going to be using a club like the Big Dog. You definitely want to make sure you bring a wood with a lot of extra power and distance. Uh, from there, you're going to be taking your shot over here and hopefully skipping it over that rough towards the hole um, for an easier shot at the eagle. Um, if you are unable to get the ball that far, it is okay to uh, take your shot to this box area right here. Um, it's a very short range uh, thorn shot and if you can hit the perfect shot, you have a really good chance of sinking that eagle shot back there as well. So definitely, um, definitely those are the options there for that hole. Um, if you do play it to the right side, um, you can try to play it off this pad right here uh, and towards the hole that way. That would be your option going that way. So here we go. Um, next hole here, keep in mind, this is Tour 4. Um, and so this is more of a guide for the rookies. Um, pro expert did not get a chance to play uh, from the second tee in this tournament so it, it's kinda hard to gauge the way to play those holes and I'm not really uh, one to just kinda like you know give you what I think it's gonna be like I like to be able to experience it firsthand so that I can tell you um, what it's gonna be like either by playing the holes in the past or getting to practice on whether if, if it's new holes like we have had this tournament so for this uh, hole right here it is hole number four Hole four, and this is a par. No, this ain't hole four. There's hole four. Hey, hole four. There you are. Hole four. Par three. All right, that sounds a little bit, a little bit better. So basically, the way we're gonna play this hole is um, there are several different ways you can play it. I think the safest way to play it is going to be to bounce your shot up in this zone right here. Um, the other way to play it is going to be off the rough bump right here. Alright, just one moment. Liam? 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 What? You're being way too loud. What? Stop it. Okay, now go outside. Go outside. Go. Alright, so here we go. Back again. Did I mention the Mississippi State game's on? And I'm here doing this? Yeah, I must really like you all. <laughs> Alright. So, you can either play from the front spot or from the rough bump. The reason I've located that spot right there at the front is because it is kind of like the flattest spot that I could find. Um, if you look at the, um, the fairway, you got bumps all over the place. Right there, 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 and there. So you definitely can't land your ball up in there. There won't be any kind of consistency for the shot. So for that reason, I say land your ball back behind those little hills. 10% uh, adjustment for the shot. Um, I would say uh, at least use a quasar ball um, at the very minimum. And for the shot up front, the backbone. For the shot in the back, sniper or a viper. Um, so for the shot up front, uh, which is going to be kind of a long bounce up to the hole, um, I would definitely say you're going to be making this shot about max distance on your backbone. Um, at least two top spin and full right spin uh, to make that shot and then kind of line that ball guide up with the hole as best as you can. Um, and you're also going to be using some, uh, some curl on the shot as well. Um, as far as the rough bump goes, it is an uphill green, so you are going to be needing to use some top spin for the shot. The few times that I played it, when I line my guide up right into the hole, it comes short. If I line my guide up, my guide up a little bit past the hole, it seems to, to give myself a little bit better chance at the ace. Um, I've seen people ace it in practice, so I definitely know it's a possible shot if you do like that kind of stuff with the rough bumps and, and stuff like that. Otherwise, I would say play your shot up short from the first position and try to get it that way. Uh, definitely a tough hole right here. And um, you know, if you're playing in the upper divisions, you may be able to use uh, some sort of a driver with a lot of backspin and take your shot a lot closer to the green. But we are doing our guide for rookies this time, uh, since those are the holes that we were able to play. So here we go, hole number five. And this is a par four. 
And let's see what we can talk about on this hole right here. Um, I would say Quasar Ball, if you got them, use a Titan Ball in this hole. Um, extra Mile, and for your other clubs, I would say a Backbone, back, a backbone and uh, probably a Thorn, at least a Thorn for this hole right here. Uh, most likely going to be using the Backbone, but there's also a chance that you could be using the Thorn. Um, the way I would suggest to play this hole is, I would suggest to play this hole where you're landing your shot in here. Um, you're going to be using the full top spin, full right spin, and you're going to be bouncing your ball over the water, over the rough, and trying to roll the shot out, uh, hopefully to about somewhere in there, right there. That's the way I'd play this hole. That's the reason why I would suggest at least a Titan ball on this shot. Um, and then from there, you will have that short iron, um, most likely a thorn, to the green with some backspin and hopefully you can make it happen right there. Uh, depending on how far you can roll that drive, you may be using the backbone for that shot. Uh, so um, you may possibly want to take a Saturn if your Saturn has more backspin than your backbone, um, but the, the pin location is a little bit farther back into the green, so I think the spin that your backbone has will be sufficient. Um, if you want to play your shot to the uh, left side, um, you're going to be trying to land your shot in this area right here. And you really need to bounce it up fairly decently this way to get past this tree right here. Um, so what you got to do to get your shot to the left side is you're going to have to use uh, left curl. Um, you're going to have to use uh, full top spin and full left spin. Um, the fairway is sloped where it wants to kind of push your ball to the right side. That's why you need that left curl and the spin and the top spin. Without that uh, left curl, you're probably not going to be able to um, get your ball in position that you need it uh, to set yourself up for a second shot cleanly at the green. Um, so anyways, moving on to our next hole, hole number six. Hole six, and this is a par five. Um, I don't really believe there's a whole lot of different ways to play this hole. Um, you're gonna play this one at a 10% adjustment for the wind. You're gonna land your shot up here, and you're gonna be bouncing it in here, trying to roll it up into the fairway that way. Um, extra mile, I would suggest bringing your um, your big dog or your viper, I played it with either of those clubs at medium level. Um, so either of them can work, it just depends on whichever one you're more uh, comfortable with. Um, two ways to play the second shot, I leave it up to you which way you play it. Um, you can play it to the right side. Um, if you play it this way, you're probably going to make sure to bring your big dog because you need a, a large amount of curl to take it around the fairway and put it in position for the hole. Um, I, for that reason, I like to play my shot to the, come on dog, go. I like to play it to the left side. Um, doing it to the left side, you're going to be landing your shot in this zone right here and rolling it around to the hole that way. I found that is a very uh, pretty easy way to play this shot. I think it gives you a chance at getting, um, I think it definitely gives you a shot at getting the albatross playing it that way. Uh, I've gotten fairly close several times and I honestly haven't played the holes a ton of times. So if I can get that close, um, you know, and just a few times play it, I think you definitely have a chance as well. Uh, the times that I did get close to the albatross, um, were times that I use a little bit of right curl with the shot. Um, you got to use right spin and a little bit of back spin with that second shot as well if you play it to the left side. So here we go, moving on to hole number seven. Hole number seven, par four. And let's see what we got here. Hole number seven, par four. Now this is a very interesting hole. Um, one that I do not think is going to have a really great scoring average for the tournament. 
I think this is going to be a very uh, big birdie hole in this tournament. Um, the different ways you can play this shot, um, you can play it this way. And basically what you're doing is you're playing this shot short here. And you're basically just setting yourself up for a second shot to the green. Um, you can try to play it to the left side. Uh, where you bounce it here, roll it up here, go in that way. Um, if you have decent clubs, you may be able to jump all that water and rough. Um, the way you would do that would be is you would be landing your shot pretty much right in there. Uh, you're going to need a driver with a lot of top spin. Um, maybe a big topper would be a club to uh, use on this hole. Um, but basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be landing your shot there and trying to roll it out this way. Um, you're going to have to use that with a Tata top spin and left spin. And it's going to require probably pretty much a really perfect shot. Because you don't want to end up in these trees right here for sure. Uh, for that reason, I would say going with the short shot, laying it up to the right side um, in this zone right here and then taking that shot this way um, to the green is probably your best bet uh, in my opinion so you got the information now you get to make the call so our next hole here is going to be hole number eight and this is a par three and this is a very, actually it's a very interesting par 3, I must say. Uh, there's really only one way to play this hole, but it's still going to be a, a fairly tough hole to play. Um, you're going to be landing your shot in this zone right here. It's like kind of like the flattest area, and it's going to give you the most consistent bounce. Um, it is kind of a little bit more of a lengthy par 3, so I would definitely suggest bringing um, a Goliath and using a Navigator Ball. If you got Kingmaker Ball, you can use a Kingmaker Ball, but at least a Navigator Ball for sure on this hole. Um, we're trying to find that spot with the most consistent bounce possible. Um, and that area where I marked is probably going to be uh, that area. Somewhere there with a consistent bounce. Um, the, the green does slope uphill fairly uh, steeply. Um, so uh, depending on the, the level club that you have, you may have to kind of adjust a little bit with the... Uh, the top spin and the spins to the left or to the right uh, and find out which works best. A lot of times, and also the type of wind that we see is also going to uh, play a big uh, factor on this shot. If we have a headwind, um, it's going to uh, kind of make that ball guy kind of pancake down. Uh, so you may have to put a little bit extra into it. If we have a good tailwind, um, that, that ball guide may be a little bit untrue. So um, you just kind of have to play this one by ear. Um, all I can really give you here is the landing spot. Um, make sure you find that landing spot with a very consistent flat bounce. Um, and also Goliath, because you will, will want a long iron with a little bit extra distance. Um, otherwise you may be landing that shot a little bit farther back and that is not something that you probably want to do. Alright, our last and final hole is hole number 9. And par five. So basically, you know, you see that big old fairway to the right hand side, it's kind of useless. Um, now, I mean, what are you going to do with the ball from that spot? I mean, you can't shoot it over the trees or through the trees. So uh, we're just going to kind of act like that whole island right there is just part of that blue water. So. Uh, what I suggest doing is taking your shot in there, rolling it up to that fairway right there. Um, you can probably do that with a, a little bit less of a driver, probably a um, quarterback or a rock even if you wanted to, or just go ahead and use your extra mile and uh, play it safe. I would tell you though, um, make sure that you do not use too much topspin on that shot. Um, you're more than likely going to actually use a little bit of backspin. Uh, it's a lot shorter of a shot than you think. Um, it is kind of a downhill shot. And um, if you put topspin on that ball, it will uh, roll over the pad and into the rough area over here. 
So make sure to put a little bit of backspin on that uh, tee shot to make sure you stay up on top of the island. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like a bowl. There's not many flat spots on it, so uh, it does uh, have a tendency to roll if you do hit it incorrectly. Uh, from there, um, depending on the wood that you have, you definitely want to bring a wood with a lot of distance. Um, you will either be taking your shot here, bouncing here and over, or if you have a really good wood with a lot of distance, um, you could possibly land your shot up here and try to take it towards the hole. Uh, that would be your other option. Um, I will tell you this though, if you land your shot in this zone right here, it's a, it's a, very, it's a very nice thorn shot to the hole. Basically, it boils down to, can you hit the perfect shot? Uh, if you can hit the perfect shot, your chances of getting the eagle on that thorn shot are very high. So uh, if you're unable to um, get the ball to the green on your second shot, I would not risk doing anything overly crazy and end up in the rough or the bunker. Um, I would suggest to lay up and just take that, that short range sh thorn shot uh, for that eagle chance. So. Um, definitely I would suggest probably going with a Kingmaker or a Titan and we're not doing that for the first shot we have that uh, that big artillery in for that second shot um, the first shot is the easy one as long as you make sure do not roll that ball over the fairway so backspin on that drive a little bit of backspin uh, it's really not a shot about distance on that drive you just want to you just want to place yourself up on top of that hill somewhere and give you the best chance of taking that second shot uh, hopefully landing there and bouncing but if not laying up your shot um, that is it um, let's go back here to the fr uh, first slide and uh, from here we're going to um, there we go back here looks like we got a little bit of mail here so let's go ahead and open up our mail. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, let's see what we got. Ooh, thanks to Dancy, it's in a it's in a, a hefty bag. Very cool. Very cool. So let's see what we got. We got a shirt here. And I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's got the uh, the logo. Very cool, black shirt with the logo. Very nice. I'm pretty sure this came from uh, Brendan, and uh, his wife was the one that uh, made this shirt for me. And uh, I thank them very much for it. Very nice, very nice. I really like it, and the size the size is perfect, Brendan. So. You asked me the other night about the size. I told you what size I wanted, and uh, that is the perfect size. Job well done, and uh, I now have my shirt to wear when uh, I get set up with the laptop and the uh, camera and stuff like that. So a little bit of advertising for the 19th hole right there. And uh, very cool, very cool. So let's see. One more time, let's look at the shirt, and I'll see if I can... I can move this logo up to the front and with this right here we're gonna end the stream and good luck to you all on the uh, the Metro Cup tournament formerly known as the Paris Cup tournament oh it's the Metro Open this is the, it was the Paris Cup then they switched it to the Metro Open for what reasons we don't know but anyways uh, we will be coming out with more videos throughout the week and uh, definitely some pro uh, content since we weren't able to uh, play any of the polls from the second tee. So thank you all very much. Y'all have a good day. God bless.